tough year. I think 2010, you and I have said, is probably going to be we've kind of come to this resistance area, this trend line resistance. So, what was the most successful year in the 20th century in which to create a bank? Welcome to the Trading Desk, where we say money talks. My name is Dave Floyd with Aspen Trading Group, and with me as usual, Matt Davio of Red Rock Partners. We've got a really good show for you today. We have an interview with Paul Kudrowski of Infectious Greed. He's going to be talking about where he sees the banking industry as well as IPOs going in 2010. We're also going to talk about the uh, current decline in the S&P 500. Matt and I have been talking about this for a while, and we want to add a little bit more color to that. And in addition, we're also going to talk about banking, where it is and where it might be going. But as usual, let's start off our segment with um, the charts, take a look at what we have in the markets. Mm -hmm. um, Matt, I just mentioned that last week uh, we finally have had a, the first, well, not the first, but w one of a few breaks in the S&P 500 lower. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Do you think this is one of the ones that is just going to be bought, or do you think this might be a little different this I time? I think it's a little different. I think uh, this is the third push, and, the, and, the, and this last push was a little flat, and it had felt flat really for the last really since early September, I mean, yeah. we, we, we've been talking about it. So mm -hmm. although we were reaching new highs, it felt flat. And again, the picture tells the story here. We never did break a trend line. We did a little bit here, mm -hmm. but now that we've got three touches on, three, that, on, exactly. on that line, I'm more secure saying, yes, it is a different different feel, much like gold felt December 4th. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I happen to agree with you. I think that uh, if you recall back in here, and I know you and I do, there was really no leadership in any stocks here. Things were just muddling around. I think this was a liquidity-induced rally, and now yeah. we've now I think the reality and, is setting in. And the other thing from a chartist, and you and I like to look at pictures again, mm -hmm. is, is that we see these big, big chunks. I mean, those bars. Those are big. Uh, that's big uh, movement. Are huge moves. And, and whereas the last four months, again, you see very tight, very small yeah, ranges. We took out a, almost a four-month range within a week yeah so yeah a matter of fact as we closed on Friday we were actually below the December closing lows which is never a good sign when you take out uh, the right. month previous low so yeah, exactly. that is a bearish in itself which never happened back here before yet. we go on to the next chart we'll probably talk about this a little bit later but this mm -hmm. is the reason that you have to be defensive with your portfolio this is not a time I saw a commercial yesterday for we invest for the long haul and I'm thinking yeah this is why you don't invest for the long haul with these well, types of yeah, I mean, again the next the, the last four months even if you're a buy and hold you should have been acquiring some some put downside protection you Correct. know to, to to hedge against these two days because as you said after this has happened, we've already lost 5%. Yeah. We've already gone down almost 6% in some of the markets across the board. So it's too late to buy the insurance. You need to buy it when things are good, not right. when they're bad. Or, we'll talk about it a little bit later, yeah. maybe not even include stocks at that point in exactly. time. Exactly. We can go on to the next slide here. So the next chart, uh, oh, no, this is the same is, chart. Yeah, the next chart is the dollar. And, and again, we've been bullish, we'll bullish, this, bullish. Yeah. And uh, we've got the explosion. And we saw another new high uh, at the end of Friday. We hit 78 and change again and this uh, you know continues to push up and yeah not much to add to this story it's very obvious it's going to continue to go up so let's flip to the next chart and this is the 10 year note and again we've been talking about it, stuck we, in this range we've been still. getting a little concerned i i'm not as bullish on interest rates as i was yeah. um I don't know. For right now, I'll stick with it. But well, I, again, I, it's if you if you take a look at that picture again, I, you know, I love showing my six-year-old charts and say, which way do you think it's going? And they'll right. tell me this way, that way, or I don't know, very cl very clearly. And it's the same type of thing. I don't know here because we could go either way, and and we're still in this uh, very you know two or three year range right. of three to four percent. So, yeah. and I think that's where the Fed wants it. They're they're you know they're talking, 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 but yep. they don't want it to go above four, and they don't want it to go below three. Sure. So, We'll go on to the next chart here. And I think, you know, a lot of the 10-year the, 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 uh, rates here are also uh, relying upon what happens with the Fed. And we've got, uh, you know, we've got a meeting coming up here soon where they're going to either uh, appoint, reappoint Bernanke or right. not. They're supposed to vote tomorrow. They may not vote tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a factor in some of the interest rate issues oh, right absolutely. now also. Absolutely. And Geithner, I think. I, I think Bernanke will probably get re, re, reappointed. And I think Geithner will end up out on the streets with, a nice, with a nice, with <laughs> a nice golden parachute. Of so. course. Uh, but I see that happening. This, this is a China. Yeah, this is, you know, I hadn't been really following China too closely, but it's been well ahead of our market mm -hmm. um, for the last couple of months. And I, I think personally, given that China's been the driver economically, I think this is a pretty good sign of maybe some weakness to come in our yeah, markets. Yeah, and the last GDP they showed was 10.7, a, a growth yeah. of 10.7% on the mm -hmm. GDP. Monster. I mean, that's a sign of not 
continuation, but rather exhaustion. Exactly, my, can't continue opinion. at that pace. Without, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of. So I think I think uh, for for uh, viewers at home, you know, factor this into the outlook for our markets mm -hmm. in the years in the in the months ahead. Go on to one more chart, I think, before we need to take a break. Ah, yeah. I think this is this goes back to our what we were just talking about with the S&Ps potentially being weak. If you want to, you know, have an investment or a trade based on the S&Ps going lower, SDS is a, the right. ETF that will rise in value as yeah, so the S&Ps fall in value. So this is an inverse uh, tool of the S&P. So as the S&P trades down, this goes up. So that's exactly. very simple. So again, you know, put a stop in at 3250, but uh, very good entry Lots, point probably yeah, here on that break. Exactly. We need to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're gonna continue this discussion. And later in the show, we've got Paul Kodrowski of Infectious Greed. You're watching The Trading Desk on COTV Channel 11.